Together, we can. Yeah, you know, yeah. I, I, I don't know what it is, but mm -hmm. this song is beautiful. It is all mm -hmm. over the place, you know. I think wherever Akwa was yeah. to write this yeah. song, he really needs to be spending more time He there. stole the year last year, 2021. He stole the year and then ushered us into the new year, No, well, we've given 2022 to him as well, you know. <laughs> hey, guys, take it. This is so awesome. Mm -hmm. But welcome, welcome to Upside Down Show on City TV. Hey. Can new I say year. Happy New Year officially to you? Yeah, you can. Why not? Great. Happy New Year. No, <laughs> you new start year, the darling. year with a band. Well, I was taught well. And I was taught by the best. So, yeah. Well, you're a great <laughs> student. Right. This is the Upside Out Show on City TV. My name is Premier Dunami. And mine is Nana Tufo. The show is brought to you by Vodafone. And Vodafone says, together, we can. Stay with us. It's a new year. And so we've got new and exciting stuff just for you. Mm -hmm. We'll be right back. Coming up on the Upside Down Show, we have a conversation with Ghanaian businessman, sports administrator and politician Kojo Bonsu. He speaks about politics and sports in Ghana. Welcome back. This is the Upside Down Show on City TV. Now we are going to be talking to one man that I have really admired yeah. for such a long time. Haven't we all? I mean. No, he's somebody you <laughs> just can't miss him. You know, I mean, with his work, with his personality, mm -hmm. everything. He's one person that, I mean, wherever he is. Yeah you will have to make him out. And his looks, I mean, that's what I want to find out, how he does it. He's looked the same way since I've ever known He's him. a fine. He doesn't change. The man doesn't age. And he's always <laughs> on the move. He's I always know, right? trying to do something different. <laughs> yeah. And what I love about him is mm. how he's able to turn things around. Of you know, course. Not of everybody course. has that skill. Exactly. You know, there are some people, mm -hmm. when it touches things, it begins to go down. Yeah. But there are yeah. others, too, who really um, would touch they something the and they chair exactly, things around. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, we are going to be finding out how he's <laughs> been able to do it. You know, um, he also was the owner, you know, of mm -hmm. one of my favorite magazines in town yeah. back then, the Agro magazine. Mm -hmm. Ladies and gentlemen, our guest now is the Honorable uh, former Mayor of Sumatra. Yes, 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 I'm yes, telling you, yes, yes. <laughs> Yeah. Now you know that the people so that we know. Yeah. I don't know if you've been told that the way you look, you know, your such and all suit really do look good on you and cloth as well. Thank you very much. I'm humbled. That's like well, best of both worlds. Absolutely. <laughs> but you know, how is one man able to do all the kind of things you do, you know, from sports to business to branding Marketing, stuff to politics. politician, you know, you may be our next yeah. uh, president. And everything in between, how have you been able to do this? Who is Kojo Bonsu? Kojo Bonsu is a, um, a Ghanaian, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. a humble person, a go-getter, a team leader, um, an optimist. Mm -hmm. And um, what again? Patriotic Ghanaian. Awesome, wow. awesome. So let's trace back yeah. all the way to the beginning from your formative years, where you were born, who your parents are, how many siblings you had, where you schooled and all that. Give us that history. Hmm. Thank you very much for asking me such a question. Um, 
At times, I get very sad when these questions are asked. Why? Why so? Because um, I started very well at the Flagstar House. Okay. okay. When I was born, my senior sister, who was a bit older, got married to the director of protocol for Kwame Nkrumah. Mm. Oh, wow. So we lived, when I was about two years, I was giving to my sister. So I lived with my sister. My sister brought me up. Where were your parents? They were there, but it looks like my father and mum had so much confidence in my brother-in-law, who was the director of protocol, Mr. Okay. Kofi Ozudako. Okay. Right. Now, he, he brought me up and he trained me and I gained all these things from him. Mm. But at a very young age, my dad passed on. Oh, oh sorry. sorry. Immediately after the 1966 school. Mm. So that even gave my mom the chance because I had nine siblings. Wow. That gave me the chance to go and live with my brother-in-law and my sister. Mm. Mm. Took me through school in Accra here. And luckily I was in the presidency. Mm -hmm. So I enjoyed the presidential style, you okay. know. Especially, you know, we lived in a bungalow number four. That is where now, if you go to the Jubilee House, that is where you see the reception, the main reception. Oh, oh it interesting. Was, it, was, it was bungalow <laughs> number four. Wow. And if you read Ghana history, during the 66 coup, that is where they said it was Kankanya means house or that sort of mm. thing. And that is the house that we lived in. So when you walk through there today, how do you feel? I feel, <laughs> I feel so sad because mm. those memories are gone. Mm. I remember in the 60s, late 60s, when after this, before the 66 coup mm. actually, when um, Kwame Nkrumah, because there was a gate just in between the flagged house and the house. So anytime yeah. Dr. Nkrumah walks in there, he wow. calls me Benin. I remember so much. Wow, hey, that's, that's beautiful. Like, like you know, he says, yeah. he says Benin, Enyin, Papa, would say Enyin, and you know. And I remember any time he, he comes to the house, he's petting me, he's doing all that. Wow. wow. Then we go to the Flagstar house, we eat, we do everything. And I really enjoyed life at that time. Mm. My, f my father-in-law was very strict, so he trained me very well. Wow. And I owe a lot to him mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because he was a great diplomat. I'm sure if you go to the foreign affairs today and ask of one of the greatest diplomats Ghana has ever had is Ambassador Kofi Gako. Great. And he brought me up. Great. So where did you go to school? I went to school in a school, you know Kanda, there's a school yeah. just by the uh, GBC. Mm -hmm. It used to be called Kanda Primary School. Okay. That's where I started school, oh. right? Because it was a walking distance mm -hmm. from there to yeah, our house, yeah. and our house was directly opposite uh, Radio Ghana. Years back, there was a place called Radio Ghana. If you knew the area, yeah. if you know the area, so that is where I went to school from the beginning. Okay. Then later on, when my sister got pregnant, that is after the '66 coup mm -hmm. of the second child. So my mother said, "Oh, I want to relieve her." from all the pressures, mm. because I was a bit naughty when I was a little boy. So my mom <laughs> said, look, come back to me. Yeah. So I went there and so suddenly my father passed on. Mm -hmm. So I went for the funeral, my father was buried. And after the burial, my sister had had the, the firstborn, secondborn. Then I came back to Accra to live with them. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I lived with them. Then I was in. You city came of, back to Accra from where? From Kumasi. Okay. That's so, I went so back to my mom. My mom was. Okay. My mom, mother was a queen mother of Ofenso. Oh great! Okay. You are from Ofenso. I'm an Anna, yes. Yeah. Anna, Ofenso royal. Well, mm. you know how to play the part. <laughs> <laughs> um, a royal with a good training, mm -hmm. not a swelling headed royal. Really? Mm. Yes. Okay, we'll come to that later. That's right. So when I came back to my sister. sister after the funeral. I was in a boarding school in Kumasi, but I always would come on holidays mm. in, Kumasi, in Accra, the city of Kumasi Preparatory School. That's mm. where I went. So I witnessed the 1966 school, mm. which was a very terrible thing that I saw. Mm. Were you in the Jubilee House when it happened? No, we were in the Flagstaff House. Flagstaff that is the house. compound where we the lived. Flagstaff House, yeah. yes. Yeah, during yes. the 66 school. How so, old so, were you then? Yeah. 
I was, I think, seven years. Yeah. Wow. So, what, what do you remember from then? So what were I remember memories? when a free fire, he had a, a, gum, a jumpsuit with some kind of cap, with not like a hat, yeah. with a you know, with a, a gun on the side, with two other guys. They came in, and they arrested. They picked my brother-in-law. I witnessed it, oh. and they took him away. He didn't even. He was not wearing some shoes, mm. so they took him off. My sister wanted to follow him, so my, my, my brother-in-law's son, he was then at Accra Academy, his name is Kweku Dako. Okay. Mm. So he told the mom, I mean stepmom, that no, you're not following him because the military have taken him away. So we were there till midday, nothing was happening, we were all indoors, gunshots everywhere. Mm. Then suddenly, we saw a car. I remember the number plate of that car. Mm -hmm. mm. It's GV17. That was the state protocols vehicle. And my uncle, Nana Kofi Atijina, mm -hmm. he lived at North Kaneshi, mm. near, near the stadium now, Kaneshi Stadium. So we were all taking, we were put in a truck and we were taken there. So we, we started living there. We stayed there for about three months after the coup. Mm -hmm. Then, because my brother-in-law was such a great man, he was employed by the National is it Liberation Council, he yeah. was employed yeah. again yeah. because he knew his diplomacy. Mm -hmm. right. So he was employed to go and work at the castle with the new government. Mm -hmm. So we came, you know, that time we were moved. Do you know where Rollins' office is now? Mm -hmm. The president, former president Rollins' office. That's where we lived. Wow. That house. That's where yeah, we moved. Bridge residence. Yeah. Wow. No, his office. You know, there's yeah. resident yeah. and office. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Where the office is, that's where we lived. Oh, okay. Just after the 66 crew, around 67, that's where we lived. Wow. Mm -hmm. So we lived there. He was working at the foreign affairs and later on was pushed to go to Russia mm. as Ghana's ambassador to Russia. Mm. I went to Russia just on the holidays and I was brought back to go to school. Mm. So I really enjoyed my life with my sister. But the unfortunate thing is that my sister too has passed on. Mm. Oh, no. So she's not alive to enjoy yeah. all, yeah. My, today. all the things that I'm doing today for her to see. Mm. She was very strict as well. I mean, always putting pressure on me. And I think that has really helped me mm. because the experience has really put me to this position now. Mm. So she died about 11 years ago. Wow. And um, I always miss her. Mm -hmm. I think she had something in common with my mom. My mom too was a very good woman. Mm. And she also passed on just before I finished my just about days. In fact, I was told that she died a day before that I finished my O levels. Mm. Mm. In England? Ghana. Oh, oh, okay. But, you know, I was so lucky when I was a young man. I followed my mom to places. We traveled a lot. Every summer, I was out of the country. Mm. I remember I, just, I said this story somewhere, and people laughed a lot. You know, I was in Form 4 in secondary school by that time. That is Tamale Secondary School. Okay. Mm. So we went to Rome. When we went to Rome, you know, we went to a restaurant. And when we were going to have, we had lunch. Mm -hmm. And the food we ate was so spicy. Mm -hmm. So my mom asked me, could you? And I told my mom, so I said, Oh, excuse me, sir. We want tomato ketchup. The guy was saying, What is it? I said, Oh, tomato ketchup. He was not, and I said, Kachopu kapacha. He was not, and my mom was in the floor. That's why I remember her so much. And, and, and she didn't, she said, ah, I don't know who, can, can you hear me, mommy? That's my friend, Nana. I, call, okay. I used to call yeah, her Mama. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, a queen mother. Yeah. So I said, Nana, I didn't know, hey, uh, tomato capacho, capacho, capacho. The man was bringing prepared to <laughs> everything. He couldn't have, so I said, capacho, capacho. understand. So, so mm -hmm. she nicknamed Kuju, 
Kachopo Kapacha. That's a dinner. Who lives here? Who's a dog? Who lives here? Who's a dog? 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 One story that I've never told anybody. You know, there was this Renault 4. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You could push inside like that. Yeah. It has a gear yeah. that you push yeah. in. At Form 4, I had bought a car like that. Oh, wow. From S uh, CFO. Mm -hmm. Those days, you could pay. I could pay for it. I'm done. Because when I travel to the UK, I bring in Max Spencer underwears okay. to oh, sell. Great. I started from very mm. long. Mm. And the women were buying it, mm -hmm. you know. So I go to school. I was very uh, like a rich man. Mm -hmm. The kids, they all the students. I would take them to lunch. I'd do, and I fly to school all the time because Ghana always used to fly to Tamale. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I go to Tamale when I there. All my schoolmates, Mike, everybody will follow you. So you treat them, you know, because I was making money. Yeah. So so um, would it be right to say that you were born with a silver spoon in your mouth? I wouldn't say that. I was born. I, I don't see the struggles. Yeah. Oh, you sure? <laughs> yeah, I'm very sure. Because no, I, I mean, you were born I in the you, you were born in the presidency. You know, mm -hmm. every summer you were traveling out there. You know, so but I, mean, I came yeah. to a life point was that, good. No, no, no. Yes, but it got to a point you that a I started. Somewhere. Yeah. At what point did you start when, feeling when the my, hardship of life? When, when my mom died, and I, I I I went to live in England. Okay. How old were you then? I was about eighteen. When I got there, I was going to go to school, okay? I got a school called Drayton School. I was enrolled and everything. But when I, I saw that, ah, I'm in UK. And I live with my senior brother. Um, every weekend I got a job before the school reopened. I got a job and I was being paid 60 pounds a week. Because in the end, I was so good at the work that I became a shop steward in the office. So they loved my work. The company is called William Shaw. They used to make some sandals. They call it Skull, Skull mm, Slippers. Yeah. That's where they yeah. used to manufacture okay. those sandals. Then I got a school. School fees was paid by my sister and the husband. Mm. September, I was being looked for to go to school. They couldn't find me. Why? I didn't go. Why? Why? because I was making better money. Every week I was earning 60 <laughs> pounds. I had my own flat. My friends were coming in mm. to enjoy with me, drinking. I was a teetotaller. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. So they come, I buy the booze, we're drinking, we're having a good time. So men, and I could look after them. So, and women? Oh my God. I mean, I wouldn't want to talk about that. Why? You had your fair share of them? No. <laughs> um, I'm a bit, I'm a shy person. Very shy, really? and I, I, I was so I found it difficult to approach women when I was a younger person. Were women approaching you? No, no, that's hard to maybe believe. you weren't showing off enough. No, no, I mean, <laughs> I, 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 from the big, from I've, I've been a prayerful person for a long time, okay, mm -hmm. but I believe in the good time. But, um, yes, obviously, a young man growing up, women will come after you mm -hmm. or lead you, but it wasn't something that I really. Was so I was focused in doing my business and working. Oh, mm. great. So at what point, you know, did you really develop your love for sports? Because sports is a big deal, you know. Yeah. Even sports in Ghana, I mean, we, we cannot talk about it without mentioning yeah. Kojo Bunsu. Let me tell you something interesting. When I was in Tamale Secondary School, I was the team manager for the Tamale Secondary School team. Oh, okay. You've always Soccer been business-minded. Mm. I tell you, me is money. <laughs> 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 you see... When I was in school, I became, I, I loved football. Okay. Mm. So I became the team manager for the school team. I remember I took the team with players, good players. We played against Abedi Pele's team mm. in Damango and we lost it. I tell you, I, I, I felt so sad, mm. you know. I started liking sports, but I was a hockey player in school. Oh, interesting. Yeah. So I followed football, I loved football. When I was in UK, my team, Tottenham Hotspur, I never missed a match. Mm. I remember, let me tell you. You very, still support them? Yes, I'm a crazy Tottenham fan. They are proud of you. <laughs> I remember we went to watch a game. Tottenham went to Southend. Mm. And those days, they had skinheads. I'm sure you've heard yeah. them. You know, they were wearing, you know, cut yeah. their hair, they wear military boots with metal, yeah. and then we, after the game we were coming, you know, we had beaten Southend 1-0, and they 
really beat us up. They kick, you know, I have, I have a saw here. If you see it, they use those boots to yeah. kick me, and I really run. <laughs> you know, the, the hooligans were terrible in yeah. South Ends, you know. And, and I, I, I love Tottenham. Mm. I've been a Tottenham mm. fan, and I've, mm. I've loved football. Mm. What do you think of our football today in Ghana? I still have confidence in the team. You do? Yes. Mm. Why do I have confidence in the team? You see, we have a match in, in March mm -hmm. or April to qualify for the work. It's a last hurdle. Yeah. Now, if we bring this team down and we lose, we cannot qualify for World Cup. Mm -hmm. I, 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 do you understand what I'm yeah. So we have to, even if they are losing, we have to encourage them. Are we so, not doing that? Are they showing are commitment? Are we encouraging them? I hear radio stories, people are insulting, mm -hmm. they are telling the captain that he goes around doing this all the time on the field. Let's encourage them. We've won laurels for Ghana many times. We've gone to finals in African Cup of Nations, semi-finals. We've it's done been it. It's a long We've drought, hasn't it? Oh, yes. It's because we are not preparing very well. That's How all. So? That's the secret. But let's encourage them. I believe that World Cup is the ultimate. Mm. Now, I, if mm -hmm. the World Cup, if World Cup is the ultimate, why don't we also fight for the ultimate, mm. which is going to come soon? I think even this evening the ballot is being done. Yeah. yeah. For but, the but, last match of mm -hmm. qualification, yeah. the home and away game. Have we not invested a lot of money in the Black Stars? You know, as against what they are giving us back. We are not getting anything. So so if you talk about we should prepare them well, how do we do it? Is it about money? Is it about um, getting um, other players to join? What Is first it... name should I call him? Frima. Mami Frima. I mean, what kind of investment have we made in Ghana football? We haven't made any investment. The little we have. Oh, come on. <laughs> Mami, I mean, do you follow football? Bro? Yes, I do. The, the investment is nothing. Mm. You see, the teams should be going for tours. They should be preparing very well. Preparation is the most important thing. Mm. We didn't have enough preparation for this Cup of Nations. That is why we are performing like that. Mm. So we shouldn't so hold who do we blame code? for yeah. this? Whose responsibility is it to afford them enough preparation ahead of a tournament? You see, the, the GFA should have a program. Mm. We should start a team that will have the nucleus living in Ghana. Mm -hmm. So if you build a team and you keep on mixing and adding and adding and adding, with time we would be able to have a strong team that has a solid nucleus. Mm -hmm. Remember when we had a solid nucleus like Asian, Muntari and the players? Mm -hmm. You see that any team that we go play with some few players, we gel. Yeah. Yeah. That is how we should do it. We are not doing that. Is, is, the, is invest, Kets, the investment is not enough. Mm -hmm. So is, is Kets, you know, and his team doing a good job? Oh, yes. I think, you know, um, the French says, petit à petit, les oiseaux fait sonner. Mm -hmm. Slowly, they'll do well. So let's not. I think Kat hasn't been two years old at the FA, has he? Yeah, just yes, yes. Yes. So, so, so let's give them the chance. I like the way they are preparing themselves. Mm -hmm. Recently, we had a football seminar, and I like the procedure they were going. Only that we have to invest more. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the for coaches, you it's about the investment. Is the investment is very important. Mm -hmm. Right. So, so w let, let me let me use you as a case study. Please. When you went to Goyle, mm -hmm. right? What did you do to make it that attractive? Because I think that our football is gradually losing yeah. that steam. People don't have that belief, mm -hmm. you know, in, in 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 the Black Stars anymore. I don't even want to go to other teams because if we don't have okay. that much confidence in the in national, the Stars, yeah. uh, I mean, senior team, then other people are suffering. What did you really do at Goal? Did it was it money? Was it commitment? Was it skill? What exactly was it? It is what, well, mommy. It is experience. Mm -hmm. and to be able to look at your situation and how you want to turn it mm -hmm. around. Mm -hmm. When I went to go as a board member, I told them that, look, our fuel stations are not attractive at all. Even I wouldn't drive there to buy fuel myself. So when you drive there, the way the place is filthy and dirty, mm -hmm. you would think that the fuel is outdoor treated. Mm -hmm. So you wouldn't go there. Even if you get there and you want to use the bathroom, it was an issue. Mm -hmm. Bathrooms, things, you can't do anything. Yeah. So I told them that, hey, for us to be able to do well as a board, we might as well find money and change the whole company. Mm -hmm. You know, the logo had a deer or a, a running deer mm -hmm. that was very old. 
Um, I, so I told her that we should change it. In fact, I had a lot of opposition, a stiff one. Mm. They even reported me to the then president, my dear old Professor Mills, that oh, Kojo Bones who wants to come and mess the place up. <laughs> he wants to come and chop money. <coughs> so Prof called me and I had a one-on-one -on -one with him. I told okay. Prof, we're all in, we're in government, we're supporting you. We want something good for your government and we know that if we do that, we'll be able to achieve all that. We'll make better money. When I started, when we started, mm -hmm. actually, I must also give the kudos to all the board members. Okay. People like Faustina Nelson, Afutagbu, Menu, um, Professor Sumeni, all of them. We, we did well. In fact, they all supported me. Mm -hmm. And we did a rebranding. Before we started rebranding, the f they were selling 25 million liters a month. But I told them that we will go, we will hit, we should be able to sell 75 million liters. And now they're doing it. Mm, wow. They are doing it with ease. It is presentation, the quality. Mm. So you always will have to study what you have around you and how to better it for people mm. to see it. And that is all we did. Mm. So, so is that the same spirit, you know, that earlier you um, approached Ago magazine with, you know, when you were doing Ago, what did you really want to achieve? Because at that time, I don't remember having any uh, magazine like that, you know, something to really use pictures to tell stories. Yes. So unfortunately, internet has come to beat us down. I mean, now <laughs> if you put anything on Instagram, on Instagram, before you take pictures and you go take it anywhere, yeah. Instagram has yeah. shown it already. Yeah. So that is what I was doing before mm -hmm. internet came mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. before, if, before all these um, Instagram the and apps, all the social yeah. apps came up. Yeah. Yeah. So that's what we were doing. Go to a wedding. Mami Frima will see herself so beautiful in a gorgeous dress. And it was a big deal and to be in Ago Magazine, and, yeah, yes. Everybody loved it. Yeah. yeah. So in life, you have to look around you, try to come up with something that will change the people around you. Mm. And that will also, not change alone, that will make them happy. Yeah. We have so many problems in this country now. And that is how you have to be able to change the system. Mm -hmm. Look at the youth. At the moment, there's nothing for them to do. Mm -hmm. They come out, they leave universities, they are around. Well, that's why we have a lot of Sakawa boys, because they don't have anything. They sit on the computers and they, they have to make some kind of money. Mm -hmm. But this country must be made, I mean, it has been done in such a way that every Tom Dick young man will be able to do something. Mm -hmm. Look at people are not going into farming. Mm -hmm. But I believe that there's so much money in farming yeah. that if you go into an industrial farming, we'll make money. Mm -hmm. But these are some of the things that we have to do. Mm -hmm. You know, look around yourself. Try to look, all these things have been done elsewhere in this world, just copying, yeah. But we are not, mm. but is it that we've not made something like agriculture attractive enough for the youth? Because we know this government keeps touting itself, having oh, introduced it's, a number of I, policies, I believe it's all, planting for it, it's, jobs, it's, it's, planting yes, for they are talking about it, but are they doing it? Mm. You know, if let's say all these young guys in the country who are doing Sakawa today. Okay, if you think that they are shown or they are taught how to have a proper industrial farm, like doing proper cocoa plantation, like the Brazilian do, mm. and when they start making money, do you think they will go into Sakawa? Because but, they're going to have a lot of people working for them, but, and they're going to make the money. Honorable, yeah. do you also think that you know, if you compare yourself growing up and the young people of today, if you are to compare these? to generations would you say that young people of today are also willing you know to do something or we are being kind of swayed with flashy stuff you know like serious life because of what we see mm -hmm. the power of internet because when you were in school you were bringing max and spencer underwear to sell to people you were being entrepreneurial yeah. even at that time yeah. Yeah. now people also have the same opportunity people are traveling you know during summer holidays and all but are we trying to do what you people were doing or now we, we a young person wants to be driving a mercedes a young person wants to be doing achieving stuff that their parents don't even have you see the thing is that it's all upbringing uh -huh. and training from the schools because if you go to school and you're not that clever and you're business minded and you can do business you know those days the kind of training we had we had respect for people and we want to learn and learn well even if it's car washing, 
you learn how to wash car very well. Because mm -hmm. I remember I used to wash cars in the house, you know. But my one of our drivers taught us that look, when you are washing, could you you know, you know, you clean it well. Yeah. You know, people are not learning things like that. Right. They just want to see, as yeah. you're saying, riding in a Mercedes Benz just like that. No. But you have to go through the suffering. You have to learn mm -hmm. from people. I mean, today I've learned something from you, but I'm not telling you. Mm -hmm. When I come, I, wherever I go, I try to learn, especially when I travel. Okay. I go to countries, I see, I say, ah, how can we replicate this in Ghana? Then I come, then I do something about it. That is how you have to live life. Learn. Mm. Gather experience from whatever you do. Right. Mm. So trying to turn things around, trying to make an impact wherever you go to, is this what led you to politics? <laughs> Politics. I mean, when I came from England to live in Ghana, that was during the PNDC days. Mm -hmm. um, may he so rest in peace, pres former President Rawlings. Mm -hmm. He's my mentor. Okay. Mm -hmm. And the wife, Nana Ajman Konedu Rawlings, she's my cousin. Okay. And she was the one that led me to come to NDC. So all the credits that I came into politics comes, goes to Nana. Mm. Mm. Nana, I wish you well, take care. <laughs> so so, so um, that is how I started. Okay. Mm. And I followed, I remember when uh, we were going to go to the changing the system from the PNDC government to this thing. Mm. I, 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 I'm a born CPP boy. Okay. Mm -hmm. I was in the young pioneer, mm, okay. but I wanted to see how CPP was going to fare. Because anything about Kwame Nkrumah, I loved it. Okay. So they formed Heritage. We went to Heritage, my cousin Bafour and I. I didn't like Heritage, the way they were doing their things. So I then came back to PNDC to see how the NDC was being formed. Mm. So when NDC was formed, from the, in, I mean, from the beginning, I was mm. there. I followed my cousin to rallies. I followed her to a lot of places. Mm. So that is why I went to, into politics. I realized mm. that politics too was very interested in Ghana. Right. Yes. No, no, uh, so when President Mahama... Well, you all went yes together. <laughs> <laughs> so why, why, why that? We've been waiting for that. You know? <laughs> so, oh, this is the Upside Down Show. We'll be right back. You welcome back. to watching the Upside Down Show. You are made the mayor of Kumasi, KMA. Right. right now, I must really commend you because I'm a Kumasi girl. So really? uh, yes, Mom yes, <laughs> yes. And, and, and I mean, unapologetically, I love you know Kumasi girl. Yeah. You know, and I must commend you for the amazing work you did, especially with the Rattray Park. Yeah. You know, yeah. because this was a point where a crowd didn't even have some. I mean, exactly. something like You've that. Seen the you know? land but going down. So, absolutely, yeah. and this was beautiful, mm -hmm. and you wouldn't think that this would happen in Kumasi. Yeah. So we really say thank you very much on that I'm humble. now when you were speaking earlier you mentioned that you were being stubborn you know remember I when said, i was a little boy yes <laughs> remember i said i would come to that mm -hmm. because it looks like you grew up a little bit with some of the uh -huh. stubbornness and and i think as a politician in ghana you need a bit of that yeah. you know because you need that toughness no it's, it's firmness not stubbornness i mean right. okay, no problem i, I no think problem. i think qualify it very well firmness you know to the highest degree <laughs> <laughs> that is okay right <laughs> now when you went to kumasi something happened mm. and as a royal i was a bit surprised you know that you took correct me if i'm wrong you took uh nana janine boateng mm -hmm. off the board for the kjtr project why would you do that hmm. This is an interesting question to ask. Mm. I think um, I think I would want to defer this question. Why? Because you see, in Asante, mm -hmm. you have to respect your chiefs. Yes. Mm. And I'm a royal, mm -hmm. so I have to respect chiefs. Mm -hmm. But when you come to administration, mm -hmm. administrative work is totally different. Mm -hmm. I've realized that. They are trying to sow a seed of confusion to create problems for the actual owners who are going to come into this property. We KME have not thought of the amount that we are going to collect yet. It's a, it's a team, we are going to meet a team of the market women, the 
MPs in the uh, city, some members of the public, so that we can all decide what to do. We haven't gotten there yet. So, obviously the allegations are not true. I want to assure everybody, and especially you, the market women and market men, that we are not going to do anything without your concern. Anybody who has paid money, the so-called 250 million Ghana cities, to an individual, we have a debt at KMA, bring the receipt, come and show us where you paid the money, so that the individual will be dealt with accordingly. This is a serious matter, and we are not joking with it. Um, with all respect to my chiefs, okay, um, the reason why I took Amor Mahini off the... I, I wrote that letter was that all the chiefs that Utumfo swears in, normally we get a letter from Menshia to give us all the protocols, to mm -hmm. give the person the protocol. Fine. Um, with all respect, Utumfo told Nana Amor Mahini to become a member of the board that is overseeing the Kajitia market, mm. right? But I, as a mayor, I'm in control of Kumasi, mm -hmm. administratively yes. wise. And if anything happens, I am responsible. Mm -hmm. Seni Abeto Ijase, Kumasi Metropolitan Assembly, Penyin Power Dano, or Munyan Foku Jobunsu, Achre Kratabi, Aqua Koma, Nana, Ajinim Boatin, Audikain, or no, and a year and one my hini, Ninana Se, Honorable Kujobunsu, Echima, and Prepi, Sakeme, and Ne and Penyin Fua, or Mu AC Kumasi, Ijakesi, and Machet Central Market, Ijana, Ayana, and one my hini, Ebaho, no pursue who say, To me, Bain, Enti, and Ayawa, the Baho, Assembly Ebeto Jano, Assembly members, Ibu Kumasi, Ayan, some Trifun Shemudi, our Makasa, Assemna, Fukujobunsu, Nasabiyo so I'm telling you the reason why I did that letter was that I hadn't had any letter from Menshia telling me that um, Amor Mahine is coming on the board. Okay. Even though um, Opemso mm -hmm. Yura Utufo has hinted me. Mm -hmm. But the way Amor Mahine was going about his work, he was becoming a civil engineer. Mm. He was going to the place, and let me correct a fact. Mm -hmm. He used to work at produce buying agency. Yeah. Mm. So he cannot come to KME and give structural instructions. Mm. Right. So you hear that today he said this on site. Today he has done this on site. He has gone to pay some money for us to do some work. 
and so, that sort of thing. So I believe that he was trespassing. Okay. He was stepping on my toes because I said to him some time ago that, Nana, look, all these things you're doing, if there's an issue, if there, like, let's say there's a structural problem. Mm -hmm. the st I remember there was a, a structural problem in Brazil or somewhere, or no, in Spain that killed people. The mayor mm -hmm. yeah, was taken to court yeah. and nearly yeah. imprisoned. Yeah. Yeah. So I said, all these things, instructions that you're giving, if we don't take care and we go into a problem, I might be questioned, administrative wise. Yes. What is your locus? Mm -hmm. Because there's nothing to show whether mm -hmm. you're working on this and so, and I haven't appointed you anything. So if something happens because you gave instructions, and I know you don't work with us, but because you're a chief, or two, four, respectfully, has given you to join us so that you can brief him on things. Yeah. Okay, so you are just like a go-between and just to report to two for all that is happening. And on top, I was also giving two for all the necessary things. But the reason why I asked that question is that to protect my administration. Right. Mm. Don't you think it's right? No, it's right. Fair. So I just wrote a letter to ask him that, look, if, we, if the chiefs or people come into office, when Shiapalis writes a letter for protocol arrangement that we should mm -hmm. accord them with all the necessary protocols, but we don't have one. So mm -hmm. please, take, bring that letter. Then it will mm -hmm. let me be happy. At least because we have formal because communication. administrative, when I get mm -hmm. into trouble, I wouldn't know. They will tell you, look, who is he? You are the mayor. Yeah. Yeah. You are responsible. So why do you let somebody give instructions and that sort of thing? Mm. So that is why. The issue was, there wasn't anything malicious. Mm. With all respect to two, four, I didn't sort of do that to, 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 to sort of disrespect him. I give him the highest honor and respect. <laughs> so I have to stand up yeah. and bow to uh, two, four. So it wasn't like that. Mm. The issue was that purely administrative. So why did you resign? Um, Resignation is that was that we were about six months to election. Mm. As the mayor of Kumasi, and all the hula baloo and the noise that came out was becoming an issue, mm -hmm. and I didn't want it to become a problem for NDC's fortune mm -hmm. in Ashanti. Mm -hmm. So the best thing is if you are the thorn in the flesh, you just sit aside for proper things to go, on. and also to respect Utufo. Mm. So I just decide to pull off. If they think what I'm doing is not right, I'll just pull off so that some better person can come and do the work no. or we would get a proper um, this thing. But I believe that even though um, maybe the chiefs didn't see the good in what I did, it's all experience. I mm. take it in strides that look, when you work, you see a lot of things, you get into a lot of issues, but it's all learning curve. Mm -hmm. That is how I see it. Right. You know? how, how is your relationship with President Mahama like, former president? Very well. We have a good relationship, yes. Okay. You are yeah. contesting against him. This time around, matter. too. Hello, I'm Kojo Bonsu, and I'm running to become the flag bearer for the NDC. When defeat threatened to split the party in 2016, I called for unity. The NDC unity walks that followed took place in 10 regions across Ghana. Attended by thousands of supporters, a powerful symbol of what we can achieve when we work together. I feel a calling to serve, deeply rooted in my upbringing and in my life experience. I have been a member of the NDC from the word go. I grew up in a home of public servants and I have served in high profile office. The experience I gained over many years of success in business and as team manager of the Black Stars is also invaluable. I believe these things have equipped me to restore the NDC to power in 2020 and beyond. I want to see an NDC that is united, an NDC that works tirelessly to redress broken promises, 
an NEC that empowers its members, an NEC that has an inclusive decision-making process, and an NEC with a plan for the economic transformation of Ghana. I believe that the NEC can win 2020. My name is Kojo Bonsu and I welcome your support. You see, Mami, um, it's just like, as a royal, we call something like when there's a vacancy in any seat, like a mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. That is why we are all contesting for the position. Mm. And it's democracy. Yeah. Our party believes in democracy. Mm. So we don't push people on people right. that go and take over or do this or we don't want this. No, it's mm. democracy. Mm. So if you are given the chance or you win, mm. you will come and run it. Yeah. Right. So yeah. it is fair that we all do it. But let me also tell you the reason why I'm running. Okay. It's not because I hate President Mahama. No. Why? What has he done to me? Was he a great president in your opinion? Mm -hmm. He was. But, but his time has become a problem. Why am I saying that? In this country, in this country, mm -hmm. The whole problem that we have is people have lied several times on John, President Mahama. What have people said that is not they've, true? They've said a lot of things. They've put corruption tag on him. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They have a whole lot of things. Like Omar Seno, they've mm -hmm. said a whole lot of things against him. Ah, like you can't even take it off. Mm -hmm. And that is where I feel very sad. Okay. Because in this country, we have the majority people, the lot of the people who will allow you to win an election is the um, swing voters. Mm -hmm. Right. Now, if you go around, the swing voters will tell you, oh, we will be for fraud buyer. And mm -hmm. for, for, for the NDC numbers we have, President Mahama has it. But the problem we have is that MPP has really soiled him. If, so I feel very sad that. So if he should we go, defend himself. I mean, if people are saying stuff about you and it's not true, that correct that impression. Destroyed. Uh, there's no redemption for uh, his image. We should have redeemed this from 2016 up to today. So he's a condemned case. I wouldn't use the word that. I think your, your word should be a bit lower. So it's he not, doesn't it, stand it, a it, better it, chance. It's, it's, mm. it's not a condemned case, but okay. he doesn't stand a better chance. Mm. Let's bring somebody new, somebody fresh, mm. so that the swing voters wouldn't have anything mm. to say against mm. President Mahama. So you because fancy your chances thing, above President Mahama? I fancy my chances because I'm not soiled. I've, I haven't been mm. lied about plenty, mm. like, mm. And that is where I come in. Mm. It's so sad. Mm. Mm. Great gentleman, speaks very well, very affable, but the issue is He's been, I mean, mudded, put in the mud too yeah. much. His integrity, mm. actually. I wouldn't use the word, I wouldn't say his integrity has mm. been questioned. No, let's correct the point, is that mm. um, in Chile they'll say, you're saying it to do. Mm. You know, they've put the corruption tag, they've said that this issue, women, that, that, and that. And all these things are so not generally true. his image They're has been tarnished. So, 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 and we NDC, as mm. a party, have not been able to defend it mm. and get him out of it. But why we haven't waited. you been able to do so? That's the party. So if the party, since 2016, if we had corrected it, we wouldn't have had come to this problem. Mm. Right, today. so quickly. So my issue is that, <laughs> yeah. let me get back to you. Yes. My issue is that, uh -huh. that thing, so that, I mean, that we want to call it a win 2024. Mm. So if we want to win 2024, I believe that because of all those things, let's bring in somebody like me. Mm. I'm eligible to mm. do it. All right. So it is not an issue of fighting Mama, mm -hmm. insulting the former president mm. or doing anything, mm. but the sad situation that we are in. Mm. Mm. So why don't we try something new and see if it's will work. All right. right. Because the swing voters are the people who are going to vote. And right. you got them. And majority of them, yeah. mm -hmm. majority of them, when you talk to them, I'm sure you've, Mami Fema, you've heard this before. Mm -hmm. Oh, NDC4, Sekamoji, 
um obi fufu ba na mama de mama onye bibia but you said they are saying no no said so they want a fresh face no not that we want they want we i believe that if we bring a fresh face he'll be um all those things that you've said about him that are lies that you put on him would not be there all right and right. you'll be a great statesman. Mm. Great, mm. great, great. Awesome. All right, awesome. Honorable. Awesome. Thank you so much. And yeah. wish you well. Thank we you. Really wish you well. Thank you. <laughs> great, great. It's been very informative, yeah. and I've also learned so much that mm -hmm. I'm also not telling. Thank you very much, <laughs> Honorable Kojobosu, for coming. So we've been talking to him. Just watch out. He may be your next president, you know, mm -hmm. in 2024. Yeah. Who knows? That is, if he gets the nod to lead the NDC um, into the 2024 elections. elections. Thank yeah. you very much for your time. My name is Premier Dinami. And mine is Nanatifu. Until we see you again. Bye-bye. <laughs>